Okay, hello, my name is George Crump. I'm the electrical technology instructor here at Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Today I'm going to talk about the wiring up of a doorbell in which you'll have a momentary push button at the front door and a momentary push button at the back door. What you're looking at in my hand to my right here is the actual wiring of the doorbell. One of the things I want to point out when you're wiring up the doorbell are the major components that are in the doorbell circuit. For example, at the very top of this little display, I have a transformer. This transformer is designed specifically for doorbells. And I say that because some transformers are designated for your heating and cooling system. The heating and cooling system operates off of 24 volts. In the residential home, the doorbell operates off of 16 volts. If you look to the side over here, it says this transformer will take the 120 volts that's coming into it at this point and reducing that 120 volts down to 16 volts, which you'll see right below the transformer here. And you see these very fine wires. Because it's such a low voltage type system, you don't need a heavy gauge of conductors to service this particular type of circuit. So the 120 volts is coming in to the transformer. It is being reduced down to 16 volts at this point. It travels down from here to the doorbell at the front. You can see this doorbell that says front door. And when I press this button for the front doorbell, there will be two chimes, which I'm not going to do at this point because I want to go through the entire circuit before I press the buttons to show you how they operate. And then if you look over here on this side, it has a rear doorbell button, which is also lit up. Both of these are lit up to indicate that they are energized, meaning they have power running through them. Now remember, the power that's coming to the push buttons is 16 volts, so it's very low voltage. And it leaves the doorbell and goes down to the chime. This is a chime that's in your hallway or somewhere centrally located in the home so that the homeowner can hear the doorbell when it rings. And in this chime, the, the low voltage wiring comes in. One is hooked from the other side of the front doorbell to the chime here. The other is hooked to the other side, which is the rear doorbell. And then you have this, this connection here in the center, which is not currently being used. Let's go through the process of showing how this doorbell will operate. So if you come to the front door of this home and you press this button right here, you will hear two chimes, and here's what it would do. That's an indication that the individual is at the front door of the home. If by chance they ring the front doorbell and no one comes to the front door, and let's say you're in the rear of the house, then if you go around to the rear of the home and you press this button, you'll hear one chime. Okay, and the reason for one chime is to designate which door that that individual has come to in your home. I do want to point out one other major aspect of putting this circuit into service. Where you locate this transformer, you want to be sure that you have enough of the low voltage wiring to travel from the transformer up through the home and to the chime location that you'll have to centrally locate in the home. And that's your choice. But that's one of the major factors in putting this particular circuit into service, is how you would lay it out so that you can wire it up in a relatively short and simple form for making it work properly. And that completes my demonstration on this doorbell. And hopefully that gave you some idea about the wiring of a doorbell of which you have a front door, a momentary push button, and momentary simply means when you press the button, it will go back to its normal position, okay? And then the rear doorbell. So thank you for listening, and I hope that I was able to share enough information to interest you in the actual circuitry.